Hi, I'm Klaus Hermann, founder and editor of Farbspielfoto.com, where we make your photography simple. This tutorial video is an excerpt of my personal workflow courses for Lightroom and Photoshop. If you're watching this prior to September 15th, 2015, you have the unique chance of snatching both courses as a free bonus. Just stick around till the end of the video where I will tell you how. And now, have fun with the tutorial. Now this looks about right to me. I'm not trying to get a finished image here in, in Camera Raw. I'm just going to try to prepare it. That's what I did. I prepared it. I did some basic adjustments to bring it into Photoshop and then carry on in Photoshop with some more targeted adjustments. And the way I'm doing this to bring the file into Photoshop is a very important step. Now the first thing that you should do is to come down here where it says Adobe uh, RGB 8-bit 300 ppi. That's the that's the the workflow settings. If you click on that, you get the workflow options dialog. And there are some important things to set here. The first thing is the color space. Now there is a, there are a lot of different approaches to this, and some people will tell you to stay in Adobe RGB because it's got a, a bigger gamut. It can uh, incorporate more colors, so to speak. And that's fine if you go for printing. If you put out, if you want to put out your uh, images on the web, for example, the web itself or the browsers that you have for viewing the web are essentially all using the sRGB color uh, space. And that's why I'm using personally the sRGB color space from start to finish. So I'm telling my camera to record in sRGB. I'm going to. Um, do this processing in sRGB and I'm going to output it in sRGB because otherwise if you move from Adobe RGB to sRGB at some point later in your workflow you can see ugly color shifts appearing. So you did all that work to bring out those colors and tones in your images and then the final step of exporting it to a color space that you actually use in the web is going to shift those colors and make it look entirely different from what you actually created. And that's why you should be using the same color space from start to finish. There's a whole theory revolving around color spaces and I'm not going to go into the details here. It, there's also kind of, a, uh, kind of a religious discussion about this. This is just how I do it. You may do it differently, other people do it differently, but that's how I, I process my images. So I'm going to open that drop down uh, menu where it says space and I'm going to choose sRGB to just get the same color space throughout the entire workflow. The next thing I'm doing is I'm going to the depth menu here and choose 16-bit. What that's going to do is it's going to create a 16-bit image in Photoshop except for an 8-bit image. And that's, that's a huge difference because in 8-bit you're going to lose a lot of details uh, in the colors and in the tones of your images. Um, and in 16-bit you've got a you'd get a, a lot, lots more colors to work with, okay? So you should always use 16-bit when you bring your files into Photoshop. You can then convert it to 8-bit at any point in Photoshop, but bear in mind that that's a destructive process. Once you convert it to 8-bit, information is going to get lost. If you convert it back to 16-bit, this information is still going to be lost, no matter what you do, okay? so. Keep your workflow 16-bit as much as possible and only convert your file to 8 bits, which is the typical JPEG compression, for example, at the very end of your workflow when you export your file. So I'm going to use the 8-bit, the 16-bit, sorry, the 16-bit option here. I'm not going to do any resizing to this image. <coughs> This is going to be, if you're doing it in HDR, especially handheld, it's going to be a little bit less than the, uh, than the uh, resolution of your camera because Adobe Camera Raw had to crop in your image probably to get rid of some of the areas at the, at the very edges. So don't uh, be scared or don't uh, panic if that's not the native resolution of your camera if you do an HDR. And the final thing, and that's a very important thing also that I'm going to set in this dialog is down here where it says Photoshop, I'm going to tick the Open Photoshop in Photoshop as Smart Objects box. And that's a huge thing 
because that's the thing that allows you to go back from Photoshop into Camera Raw and change those settings and that can be very valuable and I'm going to show you how you can use that in a very clever way and in inside Photoshop to um, to make your processing more flexible so tick that box that's very important I'm going to I'll say OK here. You say that this line, you see that this line down here has changed now to reflect the settings that you've chosen. You also see that this button has uh, now says Open Object. Uh, and that means when I click that, it's going to bring that file into Photoshop and it's going to be a smart object. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to click Open Object. Photoshop takes a few seconds while it's trying to make sense of all that data that Camera Raw gives it and then you're going to see our file appear in the layers palette and it's going to be a smart object. Now again this can take a while so Photoshop is reading the Camera Raw format and there you see the, um, the image in the layers palette and I'm going to change the options here slightly to make those images a little bit bigger and there you see it. Now you see that this is a, um, a smart object as opposed to a normal layer by this little icon here in the right lower corner of the image. Now you can always go in and rasterize that layer which makes it a normal layer, okay? Um, but if you then go in and turn it back into a smart object you cannot go back to Camera Raw. So leave it as a smart object it's going to make your workflow inside Photoshop much more flexible and powerful. If you're watching this prior to September 15th, 2015, you're lucky. Because you can snatch your free copy of my personal workflow courses for Lightroom and Photoshop. And here's how it works. Simply head over to the link below where the 5-Day Deal Team organizes the biggest bundle sale in the history of photography. It's running between September 10th and 15th, 2015. And this is your unique chance to get a huge bundle of high-class photography education and tools from the world's best photographers at an insane discount. No matter which type of photography you're into, this is the best investment you can make in your own photography. And in addition to that, you can even win over $50,000 worth in prices. If you purchase the bundle through this link, I will send you the download links to my full personal workflow courses within 24 hours. But please do make sure that you use this link to start your checkout process for the bundle. Otherwise I will not have your details and I cannot send you anything. So, I hope I'll see you for the 5-day deal event. Take care and have fun.